Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Going to look at a uh, celebrating Neil Adams' career, pulled out Mr. T and the T-Force from 1993 and now comics. Uh, before we open this thing up, I want to encourage everybody to like, follow, and subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button. That'll notify you when we post new videos, give you a leg up on the Kayfabe effect. Kayfabe effect... Whenever you see Mr. T and the T-Force 1 and you don't have it in your collection, you run off to eBay, Amazon, your local comic shop to try to get a copy. And uh, the people who are watching the video from the beginning, they might be a step ahead of you. So sign up for those notifications. You'll be the first one to know when a new comic shows up. And let these videos play through to the end. That allows YouTube's algorithm to share our videos with other comics fans who haven't found Cartoonist Kayfabe yet. It's how we grow this channel. We're over 60,000 strong at this point. Thank you for sharing the, the good word of Cartoonist Kayfabe and let those videos play through, man. We're going to get to 600,000 one of these days soon, Ed. But we are here. Uh, lost Neil Adams recently, one of the true giants of the comic book industry. And so we want to look at some Neil Adams comics, talk about his art, his legacy, and... Uh, many decade long career. So this is a representation of one of his works from the sixties and, uh, doing a likeness of Mr. T here, the creative consultant and director for this comic as the credits page will show. But interesting to note, because one of the things Neil Adams is known for is a sort of realistic style and getting a likeness to a character like a Mr. T, um, you know, kind of highlights that realistic style that he's known for. Absolutely, man. It says now comics, but for all intents and purposes, this is a production of Continuity Studios uh, in, in, a, in a giant way. Uh, there's our credits page there. 1993 uh, is when this thing co comes out. Uh, you see Art by Neil Adams and Continuity Studios. I would make the argument that probably Continuity Studios has a way heavier hand uh, in the composition and, and all of that stuff. I believe that Neil Adams, uh, what he's bringing to the table here is what Joe Kubert brought to the table with the uh, the war books in the 70s under his editorship. Uh, you know, Sam Glansman, these guys, they go out, they, they draw the stuff. He's going to get those pages the very end. Add add some add some cherries on top and make it and and create a a hole to the, yeah. To it reminds thing. me of uh, mangaka that have a lot of assistants and stuff and and you know we see those on Man Ben how these guys work and it is sort of like maybe lay out the story go in there with faces or figures or get it at the end and make sure it has uh, it passes your wor worthy of your signature yeah so we got probably like uh, who man S Claw Clark Hallbaker in here Tom Grinberg uh, they're getting paid their their page right now. so many guys have gone through continuity too like you wonder if it's guys stopping in in between uh other freelance assignments so you know trevor von eden i think you can find in some continuity credits mark texiera uh larry stroman i think did some earth fours at one point in continuity so yeah a lot of luminaries throughout comics have uh have done some pages there we're, in continuity we're going to be looking at a lot of new atoms uh throughout the cartoonist cafe by uh, youtube channel uh over in the in the foreseeable future uh the reason like this one rises to the top is because there were just so many copies of this thing printed uh i remember like seeing it in like three four one bags and stuff all throughout the 90s this was something was it an animated show uh, i feel like this was something that was maybe supposed to happen or happened a little bit and maybe didn't become the success they were hoping for but it feels like there was maybe a little bit more of a media tie-in with this a, yeah. a big push because you're right there were a lot of these comics out there probably not an issue that'll be kayfabe affected in right. terms of becoming scarce but a uh, kind of a fun comic and a snapshot man this is this is the height of the speculator bubble, 1993. Like, this is when everything was coming out. And now comics must have been their last hurrah. Sure. Yeah. And this is drawn in, in you know, that style of those, like, Three Musketeers bar ads that would be in all the Marvel comics and stuff. Like, you, like you, you see it all in here. And what this comic kind of is, man, like, I got this thing uh, sort of at the ready the Green Lantern, Green Arrow comics of the very early 70s by Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams. And it brought like a certain level of consciousness to, uh, to comic books at the time. This feels like Neil Adams' like 90s version <laughs> of the hits. bringing consciousness <laughs> to comics. So you replace the spider bags with uh, crack cocaine, man. <laughs> there you go. But it's it's funny because you know it's a '90s comic, and where uh, where Neil Adams is like like the the Continuity Studios guys are 
with um, drawing the bad guys. It really is like when Kirby and Ditko were drawn dudes with fedora hats in like even the 70s and stuff. Like nobody in the 90s who was respected in the neighborhood like like looked like these dudes, especially the big like kingpin heavy guys. He would have been wearing some really cool like Bosch jeans, potentially a Kuji sweater or something like that. But none of the uh, none of this like warriors come out and play type right. garments. Look at the just the bottom half of this dude. That looks like a 60 year old overweight man. Yeah. <laughs> Also very sparse on these backgrounds, which feels like both a 90s staple, but also a uh, let's get this book to press. Yes. Which would add to the having continuity studios pitching in. Yeah, exactly. Right there. <laughs> when we do put in a background, a little shout out to continuity studios. But it makes me think like this was a job that was turned around quick, like a toy company, an animation studio, somebody decided we've got something here, but we need to get it out by a certain date. How do you think you, um, you take the logo and put it in perspective, like, like on a, on a angle that way? Because I, I feel like it's an analog process. That's a good question. I don't know. Whenever, um, I saw some of like the Dave Sims, strange death of Alex Raymond, and there's a bunch of these like 2d perspectives that are in there. He photographed the 2D. So, like, he'd be standing at an angle and take a photo and then work from that photo that had perspective applied to it. So, it's possible there's something like that. I don't really know. Oh, you know what? I guess if you have that artograph projector, you could... you could. Oh, put, you could turn it at an put angle. Put that on an angle and then get Oh, yeah, we're idiots. That's, I'm going to make sure that's probably what they did. <laughs> yeah, of course. Some airbrush in the color. I mean, definite continuity studio's color. When I see him yelling, you're next, I think of Bill Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, take a drink every time he says the word fool. That's true, too, which also feels a little outdated in, in 93. But he's standing up to these punks until they show up and, uh, guess what, armed and dangerous. This is the next level, man. We're, we're, we're escalating. The stakes are, are rising. That's what I'm saying, man. No, res no respectable 1990s gangster like was, would be caught dead with uh, some, some garments like that. It's quite a range, too. We go from our sleeveless dude into full suit, same same group, and he pulls out his own gun. No, it's a, it's a video the, camera. No, now go to the cover real quick. Just flip to the cover real fast. They even have like the lens flare right there, like you shooting it down, you know. And you see it, and you're like, "Whoa, what is this, man?" It is the '90s era, and big guns were all the rage in your Absolutely. comic books and stuff like that. So you have to, you have this in his hand to like sell it. Because kids are like, oh, Mr. T, and he's got a dope gun. That's sick. But no, it's Mr. T. He's wholesome. Mother, there is no other like mother. So treat her right. <laughs> Remember that one? <laughs> it's a video camera. Look at all the lenses and stuff. Yeah, man, three lenses. Dude, it's a, it's a rod light. It's cables VHS cam. <laughs> <laughs> Straight out of the 501 jeans commercial. And it's almost like, uh, like I like to think like one is like a fish eye for your skateboard tapes. He's taking our pictures. <laughs> that blonde dude's amazing. <laughs> what haircuts. And it's representation, you know? And of course, anytime you have a, a big print run book, you got to get your own stuff in there. So now Comics promoting their Green Hornet line. They've got about six Green Hornet comics they're running at this time. I hate that font, by the way. I can remember being so like, what's up with Green Hornet? Like, it wasn't real. I, I was aware it was an old TV show, but... 1993, it's not like I was looking on the internet or anything. It was just like, that's a weird title. They try, it just they try, looks old. They try to keep bringing it back, you know? Michelle Gondry, freaking Seth Rogen shit. Yeah, I mean, at least I feel like now we have access to all of it. You know, you could be a fan, track it down through Bruce Lee or something. But in early 90s, I was just like, I don't know. Yeah, like, I mean, here's where it was, really, like, in, in, 19, in the 90s. Like, when we were growing up, uh, the Adam West Batman was, was on... Um, Nick at Night. Uh, the Family Channel mm. all the time. It was in syndication on probably several several stations, and those ones with a Green Hornet and Kato are fucking dope, dude. Bruce Lee, you know what I'm saying on 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 Batman. Like so, like that. It had a resurgence at, at that moment. I, I feel like it does make sense. Well, except they they go out of business, right? <laughs> all right. So beats up punks first. Now he's beating up the guys with guns, bending the barrels. Dude's a superhero. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's, ne he's never been larger. 
And and he and he is like one away from Jesus in terms of his pi- piety and stuff. I do have to show off. Like that's one of those faces where it's like there's no way Neil Adams is is doing anything mm, on that face. Not at all. Not at all. And he can't even save it. He probably fired that that guy and, made, and turned it to a letterer. <laughs> there's a few of these that look a little bit fun. Like uh, you know, these aren't terrible faces, but they don't look like Neil Adams. No, to me. like the guy who drew Me- Megalith probably drew that one. I recognize that face. Megalith. <laughs> We're going to have to do a continuity uh, comics kind of episode. Death Watch 5000. Overview all those things. Earth 4. Got to get numbers in there. And like this kind of stuff. That's that's 90. That's young guys doing that shit. You know, no Adams didn't do that. Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comics that Ed Piscor and I make. The best way to support the channel is to pick up some of our comics. So right now, available in comic shops everywhere is Ed Piscor's Red Room. The Antisocial Network collects season one of Red Room, four issues, plus a lot of great bonus material. Trigger Warnings, the second season of Red Room, is in stores everywhere now. The first two issues, possibly three by the time you see this video, are out there wherever comics are sold. Banned in 23 countries and 11 comic shops. But they will track these down for you if you ask them, if they don't already have them hidden behind the, can- behind the counter in a brown paper bag. Also available from Ed Piscor is WYSIWYG, Portrait of a Serial Hacker, A History of Computer Hacking, X-Men Grand Design, three oversized treasury size editions of the X-Men story, kind of a biography of one of Marvel's best-selling characters, the X-Men, and what started the entire Grand Design tradition, and Hip Hop Family Tree, a non-fiction historical account of hip hop, available in four oversized volumes and two beautiful boxed sets. My latest comics available in comic shops everywhere. Hulk Grand Design Monster with some beautiful variant covers. Peach Momoko, Ed Piscor, Marcos Martin. And now Hulk Grand Design Madness. Again with some beautiful variant covers by Jeff Darrow, Ed McGinnis, and of course my classic version. Telling 60 Year History of the Incredible Hulk, written, drawn, colored, lettered by me. Also available, The Plain Janes with Cecil Castellucci. The first young adult graphic novel. And available from Image Comics, Street Angel, and several oversized hardcover collections. Again, like the treasury size. These are available wherever you buy comics and books. Looking for a new way to enjoy your favorite comics and manga? Comixology Unlimited has you covered. With Comixology Unlimited, you get unlimited access to an unrivaled library of over 40,000 digital comics, manga, and graphic novels, featuring content from over 125 publishers and thousands of independent creators from around the world. And if that's not enough, you can also save up to 15% when buying select new and current comics. Try Comixology Unlimited today with a free 30-day trial and then just $5.99 a month afterwards. For details, visit Amazon.com slash Comixology Unlimited. So everybody kind of runs away except one one punk that Mr. T grabs and now uh, he's going to make him his... Uh... I don't know, sidekick. I, I don't even know what to describe him as, but he's going to turn this dude's life around, <laughs> starting with uh, what's in this in this dumpster. We've been teasing it for a whole whole lot, and uh, whenever they would show cut to this, I forget what the what the word is that they use. I think keening. There's a keening from coming from the trash bin, and it's always this e. And I just imagine that they went through a thesaurus. And looked up crying yes. because they couldn't give up the the big reveal. And Keening is, I think that's the word, uh, was was the best that they could come up with. And they and they use it a couple times. Basically, what I'm saying is they did everything they possibly could to 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 not say a crying comes from uh, the the trash bin or whatever. Because of course we have we have the big reveal. Yeah, and man. Back to the purple prose. I can't believe the treasures that people throw away. Yeah. How their hearts harden. How they can't see because their eyes are stone. <laughs> the, <laughs> the precious tears, gold baby. in this. <laughs> Good baby. Real well-drawn baby That's right true. there. That's true. I, it would almost be funny if, if it were like the typical comic book baby. It would look like a, like a an eight-year-old. <laughs> like or... when S. Cla- Clark Hawbaker was trying to draw no, Nomad's little, kid, little Bucky. But you do get the, the crying hero, which never quite works the way... It's supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> this makes me uh, think, imagine if this were like a like a TV show and Mr. T's trying to emote like that. Like a, like a crying Mr. T acting. <laughs> and then, of course, this is the dialogue bubble that, that we all lo- love the most in sixth grade 
English class when it was time to like, you know, pull out your own reading materials for 30 minutes or whatever and showing everybody Crack Baby in a comic. Everybody, yeah. we, we popped for that one. It's a Crack Baby fool. It's so awkward to do these kinds of uh, elements in a comic that's clearly like superhero cartoon. Just a, just a mashup of, of uh, different, very, very different atmospheres here. Unfortunate fingers different Different moods. <laughs> so it tells this dude to take a shirt off. Do you think people are joining the, uh, the T-Force? I'd spam, dude. Probably 1%. I'd be curious on numbers of that. And also what you got from it. So peels off his shirt, wraps the baby up in it, and uh, hands him over. You got a lot of junk mail from it is what you got, man. Yeah, really. Yeah, this, now this is your responsibility. You guys have been uh, injecting poison in the community. These people who got hooked on your shit, they're not buying food. They're not paying the rent. Gives him an Apple Watch communication device so you can track him and talk to him. Yeah, it's like, it's like the uh, house arrest gimmick. And shakes his little VHS case. Love it. It's that plastic clamshell. The clamshell. The, boot, the, the bootleg clamshell from, from the uh, comic book conventions. If you wanted, like, eraser head on VHS. It's so funny how ubiquitous that was and now gone. Totally. People watching this, if you're under 30, you're like, I have no idea what this is. I I've was... seen two and a half million of these in my life. <laughs> None in the last 20 years. Yeah, I always do that with my sister. So... This is just a bizarre comic. Yeah, look at that right there. This right? is one. Yeah, this is one of those images I wanted to point out. But you know, you start looking, and it's like this is just raw. It looks like a sketch. Yeah, reminds me a lot of that man Ben when they find one panel like two minutes before deadline, and the lady just draws it in ink real fast. Right, kind of reminds me of that. But you start looking, and like there are other marks that are like that. You know, a lot of Neil Adams, I, I think he does these marks that are almost organic and that they're drawn really quickly, and then you look at it, and it's like, oh, that's a realistic looking portrait. You know. But when you look close, it's it's not um, they're not as deliberate as something like a Scott Williams hatching or something. No, yeah, I, I mean the whole the whole setup of this, the whole art style of this thing, it feels like like a behind the scenes like rough stuff or like storyboard stuff that you that you would give to a presentation that like sort of really wasn't meant to see the light of day. That's it, interesting. It, it, it doesn't yeah. really feel like finished. Uh, comic pages in a lot of ways. I don't think that's New Adams either, by the way. It's not a bad face. It's neat, too. Like, you can see, I think that's marker coloring Yeah. on, on his pants, and certainly in, like, the reflection... Excuse me, the reflection in the waters there. I like seeing that. But then there's airbrush, and it's it's that one that, like, spit, you, it spits out the speckles. Yeah, it's really interesting coloring, because this is also... 93, we're starting to see digital coloring become mm -hmm. uh, used more widely... And I feel like this is what comics really look like for a while, even though this is like an analog version of it. I mean, look at the coloring and, and drawing on those pants. That doesn't feel like Neil Adam marks. These these big thick things do in a way. Like when Neil, the, Dick Giordano would ink them, there would be these like super thick. And the drapery, yeah, I don't know. Some of the faces that feel Neil Adams-y to me. You know, that face, her face. That, uh, like, screaming person face feels like one that is in a lot of Neil Adams comics. Yeah. So he's taking the baby to this clinic. And uh, this nurse, just she's seen enough. She's going to quit. But, uh, of course, they talk her back into coming. And a few of the other guys that I guess Mr. T has kind of rescued, you see they have their devices on their arms. So I guess this is the T-Force that he's assembling. Such a comic. I mean, that's Crib from Kirby. If that's not Black Panther, that's a Captain America. Like, I recognize that that image. I like this hand, how it's just going in every direction. Yeah, which one is the uh, pinky? <laughs> it's uh, like, uh, like a Rob Liefeld yeah. or, or Hunter S. Thompson, two thumbs. <laughs> that's funny. It's gonzo hand. This is so bizarre, though, this end piece. So I don't know where he's at or why this is such an important moment that he's jumping through this roof. But boom, like all of a sudden he's confronted by a guy with a giant gun. Another uh, look at the size of this bad boy. I have no idea what this is. This guy sweats crack rocks. And like that's he's the plug bit for the whole town. He just uh, is that true? No, I have no uh, idea. <laughs> there's at least a second issue of this, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, it's so funny because like looking around, like I think there are seven issues. Seven issues. Yeah. Is Neil Adams involved in all of them? Uh, no. Okay. 
Yeah, um, you know, issue two, we have uh, Columbia, drug lords from Columbia showing up. It's so bizarre because, like, it's totally a cartoon on one side, but then, like, you're trying to do crack babies and Colombian drug lords. Right. That's a lot of language to parse together. <laughs> but interesting uh, interesting time shot, I think. And here we go with, with some of these green hornets. Maybe it was selling well, you know? I mean, you don't publish four of them if it's not. Well, I think... Oh, okay. This is, like, a mini series because these are just different numbers yeah. of, of like the regular series it's sting of so i guess three different titles Jeez. going on ralph snort twilight zone is something that now published a few different volumes of and one of them was i think harlan ellison writing and neil adams drawing oh, that's like, interesting. like one, one issue you know like a big oversized uh either an issue one or a uh, an annual or something like that and i thought that was one that might be worth looking at because it's another one these now comics that Neil Adams does, I think they all have big print runs. And Harlan Ellison, Neil Adams, is a pretty big Yeah, it's a good pedigree. Team up. So Mr. T and the T-Force. Had to put that one under the microscope just because of the popularity of it, the ubiquitous nature of it. And, uh, you know, you have a good shot that most that many of the, the kayfabers have copies of this sucker. What do you say, man? Jason Riker, Toy Boy, uh, next time? <laughs> there you go. Silver sure. Streak? Armor. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Armor, that's right. Silver Streak just shows up in armor. Yeah, we'll have to dig into the continuity output at some point. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. You know, the other part of this is, like, you mentioned the Three Musketeer ads, right? So continuity yeah. did a lot of commercial art. This feels like a commercial art job. Mm -hmm. Where, like, somebody that had this license showed up and said, we want a comic book of Mr. T., let us hire you to do that. Absolutely. Continuity Studios. I, I don't I don't know what the timeline would be, but Neil Adams worked for that that company called I think it's like Johnstone and Cushing or Johnson. Mm -hmm. uh, Cushing and Stone, I think. Yeah, okay. Um very famous illustration uh, agency. But mostly uh specializing in comic mm -hmm. book illustration for 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 advertising purposes, right. promotional purposes. I don't know how long that company stayed in business, but it feels like continuity became that with like stuff like the, uh, you know, Snickers ads and like the other weird ads we'd see in comics, plus like a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that just is squashed by NDAs, but drips and drabs sneak out. You see it over their shoulder when there's a nice portrait of New Adams and you see his drawing table and it's comic book looking imagery used to sell sell other stuff yeah. cheerios yeah and i bet there was a lot of like animation pitches and toy lines and things like that that they were doing concept art for absolutely pitch art stuff like that that uh yeah it's a shame that that stuff gets buried yeah you know so many cartoonists i think have a big chunk of that in their in their history somewhere and Gotta it's pay just the bills. gone like it's lost to the ages for the most part uh, always bums me out but yeah they, they certainly did a lot of that commercial art and i bet that's what this comes out of feels like it man you good to go yeah okay favors like follow subscribe to the youtube channel hit the bell we'll notify you when new vids are available it's out there jimmy hulk grand design monster and madness and comic shops everywhere while supplies last pick that up 60 year history of the incredible hulk reimagined retooled by me writing drawing coloring lettering you know the grand design uh setup and you can join me on patreon.com slash jim rug Red Room Trigger Warnings, Issue 1, 2, Potentially Issue Number 3, On the Stands As We Speak, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics. Banned in 28 countries, banned in 10 comic shops, but if you can't find it out in the wild, go to my link tree in the description below this video. Uh, you'll be able to go to the Fantagraphics website, order and pre-order the comics there. You can hit up my uh, Patreon, read the comics right now. Uh, I put up new strips every uh, Tuesday, and three bucks gets you the complete archive. What else do we have out there, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. That's another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Jimmy, given those marching orders, we'll be on our way. Read more comics.